The honest truth is most people's portfolios and imagery sucks. It's awful, it's not gonna get any attention, and it needs work. But what people don't know is it's actually a very easy process and only a few fundamental techniques need to be used in order to get those clean results that you're looking for. So in this video, I'm not gonna necessarily model anything, but I'm gonna show you how even with the most simple model, you can get beautiful and even realistic results. So before we start this, there are three things that you need to consider. One, what materials are you using? Two, what textures are you using? And number three, what lights are you using? What is your lighting setup? Now we're gonna cover all three of these in today's video, but um, if you wanna get a little bit more in depth into how all this stuff works, check out the link below, watch our nine secrets blender training, goes in depth into all that different stuff, including you know, how to use lights, how to improve your composition, your visuals, all that good stuff, it's free, you can get it below. So I'm gonna add in maybe a surface. I don't really use these ever, but um, for today's video, just gonna make life a little bit easier. I don't think the NURB system in Blender is anything fancy, but I can just kinda get like a cool plane like that. Control A, visual geometry to mesh, and now we kind of have this result. And then I'm just gonna add in, you know, a layer of sub D, just so that way it's a little bit more rounded around those corners there. So we're just gonna work with this basic plane and maybe what I'll do is just manipulate this a bit more so we kind of have some more bendy, you know, interesting formations kind of like that. Maybe scale this a bit, not too much. And uh, yeah, that looks good to me. So the first thing you need to consider is what type of lighting is set up in your scene. This should always be number one because if I start adding materials right now, chances are everything is gonna look different for me than it is for you. And let me prove it. If I were to start by adding materials here, so maybe I go into look dev real quick, you know, make this metallic, make this darker, make this more reflective, and then I go into rendered mode, chances are my lighting is gonna look completely different compared to what you have because you probably don't have the HDRIs that I'm using installed. So this is why I wanna focus on lighting as the first point. Lighting is the most important thing to hit before you do anything else because it's gonna give you those visuals that you really need. Now, I personally have a pack from Alex Senechal. Um, it's like a Studio HDRI pack. If you guys got material works during the pre-order period, you should have access to five of those. If you didn't, you can pick up Studio HDRIs on pretty much anywhere. Um, I use polyhaven.com for mine. There should be some Studio HDRIs on there uh, that you can download for free. But if you are curious, the pack I'm using is from Alex Senechal. No sponsorship or any of that bullshit. I'm just telling you what I use. Uh, Gun Gradient Simple B, if that's uh, something you want to pick up. So you're going to see what this actually gives me is really nice studio lighting, realistic lighting, which is the most important thing that I want in this situation. So what I'm going to do here is just quickly turn off transparent. You can really see kind of how this whole HDRI looks. It's just a basic studio one and it's gonna give you the, those uh, most realistic results. And you're gonna see, depending on the angle of my camera, you're gonna get different you know, angles of the lighting, which is precisely what we want. And I'm gonna turn transparent back on. I don't wanna see the background, but as you can see, you know, different angles are gonna get you different reflections and things like that. So that's step one, figure out which HDRI you wanna use depending you know, on the context of your scene. If you want a nice overcast neutral lighting, perhaps you would use something else like abandoned slipway. If you want something more realistic, perhaps you'd use you know, a studio HDRI. Now what we need to do is tweak our material. Now I've already added the material, so if you haven't, just add a new one. And there's three main material settings you need to focus on here. There's only three that really matter. It's gonna be base color, which is just the color. It's going to be the metallic values. Now, there's no such thing as a metallic value in between zero and one. Objects are either dielectric, which is non-metallic, or metallic, which is when the slider is set to one. So either zero or one, there's no in between, unless you're trying to get a bit creative, but generally, you're either gonna use zero or you're gonna use one. 
and that's all you need, that's it. Now, most of my objects, since they're hard surface, are indeed metallic objects, so, you know, most of the time I do have this slider set to one. Now, you don't need to worry about specular, specular tint, any of this stuff. Uh, anisotropic can be interesting. It's kind of like the stuff you might see on like the bottom of a pan. Uh, in this case, it's not going to actually work, um, but you'll probably like never use this to be honest. Sheen, none of this stuff. You might use clear coat occasionally. Uh, before I add that, let me adjust the roughness because the roughness slider is the third most important value. So you have base color, you have metallic, and then you have roughness. Now. You don't want to go too low or too high. Generally, I like my objects to be a bit more reflective. So, you know, somewhere around 0 0.3, 0 0.4 usually gives you that nice reflection that you're looking for. You can kind of play with that. And then clear coat can be useful if you want like a layer of clear coat on top of that thing. And then if it's too heavy, you can always increase the clear coat roughness and you can kind of see what that's doing. It's a very, very minor difference, but it can be useful, especially if, you know, your object might have a, a layer of clear coat. So these two, materials and lighting, are the most important ones, but there is a much more powerful way to kind of distribute the lighting and get a more realistic effect, and that is through the use of textures. Now, textures you can simply download on websites like polyhaven.com, and basically you would use the Node Wrangler to plug in your textures here to the principled BSDF shader. If that's the route you want to go, be my guest. It's just very tedious and a complete waste of time. Uh, instead, I'm going to use Material Works, which is our new add-on, of course. If you don't like that I'm using it, don't really care, because this thing is absolutely insane, and it's going to demonstrate the... Uh, the example here perfectly. So I'm just going to load in the material library and um, basically this material works add-on that we've just developed has 50 hard surface materials you can use. You can pick and choose. We've basically only added the most important materials that you'd be using on a daily basis. So, And I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. I'm going to use something like carbon fiber. I'm going to select that. I'm going to go to procedural projection here just like that and then you can adjust some of the settings here if you want I'm not going to do that because they're all at the default and then I'm just gonna make this scale a little bit lower so now we have some more interesting results now you're gonna see when you start using a texture you have completely different lighting effects and the reason for that is that textures have different you know textures within them for example if you have a basic material and had like a splash of paint texture Perhaps that splash of paint might be reflective on the those areas, and then the base material might be a bit more matte, a bit less on the uh, reflective side. And that's kind of what's happening here, you know, with this particular material. You can see each of these pieces might be, like this one might be a little bit more reflective, and these might kind of absorb the light a little bit better because it's on the darker side. And this is why textures can be super useful because it can actually help kind of diffuse the light and give you a much more flat lighting that you might be looking for. So you can kind of tweak that, see what you like. We have other ones in here as well. So, you know, for example, if I use something like a hard foam, you're going to get a completely different result in the lighting because it's kind of, you know, all distributed and it's more or less a flat texture. It's not really reflective. It's a foam. So we're not going to have a reflective foam. That doesn't make any sense. And this is why texture is so important because you're going to see, you know, it's going to change up and oftentimes the material might be the same. It's going to change up the material, but the texture itself is going to be quite different. So you can really get in here and, you know, start seeing some serious changes in the lighting, which you can start using to your advantage. So textures are probably the third most important thing you can use because you can see the lighting remains the same. The materials might, you know, remain the same as well. It might be metallic. The roughness might be the same. and But all we have here is a difference in terms of the textures and the colors. And that is what's going to actually yield you vastly different results depending on what you're trying to accomplish. Now, once you've gotten these three in, lighting, materials, and textures, you want to figure out the best way to get yourself a clean looking render, right? And that's basically going to be up to the angle of the camera, you know, the focal length, the resolution, things like that. I'm going to go back to this carbon fiber because this is probably one of my favorite uh, materials and material works. And we're going to do something like this. So at this point, really all you need to do is kind of manipulate the angle 
in the background and things like that. So what I could do, for example, is I could add in a plane and then on this plane, I could just give it a very basic, you know, color, nothing crazy. I can make that metallic. I don't necessarily want to drop the roughness, but I can kind of play with this and, you know, get myself a nice dark background so I can get myself a nice render and just see whatever works. And then all I need to do is add in a camera, shift A to add in the camera. And then you just have to find yourself a nice angle to render this. Just figure out which area has the nicest lighting for you. If you don't like the lighting again, that would mean you just need to change the HDRI. As you can see, this is a pretty cool angle right here. It's really capturing the essence of this texture of this object. And we have a really nice background, so it's not super disturbed. So I'm gonna press Control Alt Zero on the numpad to move the camera here. You can also go here to uh, align view, align active camera to view. And then what we're gonna do, just press G and then ZZ to kind of move this out. And let's see how that looks. If you don't really like how that looks, try making the focal length a bit higher, maybe like 135. And that'll kind of give you a more orthographic view of the object. And then what you could do is, you know, rotate this camera and kind of find an angle that, you know, you like. You could even rotate the object, but keep in mind that is going to manipulate the uh, lighting. One other thing I do want to mention is that the distance from your backdrop to your object can kind of change how it looks. Because right now we have a shadow being cast, but if I were to move this down, as long as it's still within the camera frame, now it's a lot farther away. So that shadow is actually not going to be visible. And I actually prefer the shadow because it really kind of gives the illusion this thing is floating and just kind of makes it feel, you know, a bit more realistic. And if you can't find the angle you want, the last resort is to simply go here into the shader editor, go to world, and then all you really need to do is just adjust the rotation of the HDRI. And you can just kind of move this around until you find you know, a lighting setup that you're happy with. And that is really all you guys need to do. You need to focus on the lighting, focus on the materials, focus on the textures, get yourself a nice backdrop, and your renders are going to be 10 times better. As long as you're doing all three of these with intention, you're not just randomly choosing colors and reflections, and you're actually looking for what looks good, your renders are going to be significantly better and you're going to get more attention on your work. That is the key. Most people do really well in modeling and then half-ass their presentation. You can't do that. You need to do both with equal effort. And the point here is to prove you how easy this really is. And just as a quick bonus here, uh, if you want to render it, you go to the output panel. I like to render at 2560 by 1440 so that way I can always downscale. Right? It's harder to upscale than downscale. And really, you just want to save this as a 16-bit TIFF. You can do a bit of post-processing in Photoshop, and you'll be good to go. So that's about it. If you want to learn a little bit more about this stuff, I'd highly recommend our 9 Secrets Blender training. This one's new and uh, kind of covers all this stuff, plus more, a lot more in-depth, and kind of shows you the stuff your competition isn't doing that you should be doing and it's really gonna help your work overall. So I'll link that training below in the description. You can check it out. It's free, no cost to you, and I'll see you in the next video.